Hi, my name is Jo Tantum and I'm a baby sleep expert. I've been working for parents and little ones for about 30 years. I started um, working in nursery units and then went on to maternity nursing, uh, which I did for about 10 years, which meant I did 24 hours, six days a week, supporting parents in their own home with their little one um, and introducing their baby to uh, the new world and the parents to the new world of parenting. Um, I then started sleep training so I did again 24 hours at a time sleep training babies teaching babies to how learn how to sleep to love sleep and um, making a difference that way because that's what I do this for I do it because I want to make a difference to people um, it can be really difficult if you have a little baby that doesn't sleep um, it can really just just mess the whole household up it's you know you become anxious uh, if you have siblings, if you have siblings, they're anxious. And um, I can just give you a few tips, some tools of the trade that will help you get through anything, even if baby is teething or if they start a developmental phase um, or if they're not well, I can really help you. So if you've got the tools and you can continue, even when there's that little blip in the road, you can continue getting your baby into a a good sleeping pattern and it's not about about your baby crying it's about your baby learning how to sleep and being confident to sleep and loving sleep but not crying through it so I can show you lots of different techniques um, and I can talk my uh, way through all of your journey that it because it's quite a difficult journey sometimes um, I know um, at this point it's really difficult because of course you're in the house we're on lockdown, we're anxious, so much more anxious than we would normally. We're worrying for our friends and our family. Um, and even just a you know, normal trip to the shops is just, you know, got fraught, you just fraught with anxiety. And then if you have a baby that's not sleeping, then you're not sleeping, everything gets even worse. And so you become a lot more anxious and then you, you know, it becomes a really difficult uh, problem that you have in the household. So I'm just going to help you through this. I'm here to support you. Um, later on, we're going to start doing some um, questions and answers. And also uh, um, we're going to do a question and answer for dads as well. Because, of course, dads now are even more hands on. Um, and so we're going to help um, help you through this journey. So stay safe and stay home. Um. Today I'm going to talk to you about um, the four to six month uh, position in sleep. Now this actually is a really big time when your baby is actually going through a lot of changes physically um, and emotionally and so this is the time actually when there'll probably be more changes than ever um, you'll see in your, your baby's sleep patterns. Um, so around four months old your baby um, goes through a huge developmental phase um, and people say, uh, have you heard of the four month sleep regression? So this is these are the reasons why the four month sleep regression isn't a myth. It's a real thing. And the reasons for this is at four months old, it's uh, a really big phase that your baby is starting to learn about the world around them. Their eyesight becomes a lot more focused. So I always say it's like they can see in HD. So the world becomes a really interesting place. You'll notice your baby's looking around more, taking everything in. Um, sleep becomes a little bit more difficult because they don't want to switch off. They don't want to um, move and they just won't just fall asleep naturally like they had been doing maybe earlier. Um, the other thing that happens is their hearing. So their hearing becomes a lot more acute. So if you have a noise, say you've got the TV on or the radio on, or you know somebody's talking um, these things can wake your baby up and you wouldn't think before they would but now they are and then you start having this baby that's waking up after every little sound and then that's making them even more tired and so the cycle goes on so there are a couple of things that happen the other thing that happens is your baby becomes more physical so what happens is they understand start understanding that their hands belong to them so you'll see them staring at their hands, looking at their hands. They're going to grab things and um, they're going to stop putting things in their mouth. And so this is because the babies really realise that their hands belong to them. And also it means that the starter reflex is starting to diminish. 
so that you know the starter reflex where you have to swaddle your baby that's starting to diminish so that means that your baby is starting to learn to take control of their hands so they're not just flailing around the other thing that's going to happen is your baby is going to start being more physical as in in the cot they're going to start turning around a little bit more as well and try and get more comfortable in the cot um <clears throat> The next thing that happens uh, around four months old is your circadian rhythm. So the baby's circadian rhythms, which is the rhythm of the sleep of your day, um, this cycle is going to change. So when your baby is a newborn, they used to go straight into the fourth stage of sleep. So there's four stages of sleep. So they used to go quite quickly into the fourth stage of sleep and they used to go into that quite deep sleep quite quickly. Now what's happening now is they're going to go from stage one and they're going to go down through the stages of sleep. So what happens is if a noise happens in stage two or stage one, it's going to wake them up. They're going to be more aware of what's happening and they're going to be woken up more easily. Um, and the other thing is that the babies can now start um, having a longer sleep at night time. So you'll, what you'll find is um, they'll be able to start linking sleep cycles. Um, so they might have just been going 30 or 45 minutes. Sometimes what can happen is actually they start waking up after 30 or 45 minutes because, again, we're talking about this, this stage of sleep. They're actually now more aware of what's happening and so they can wake themselves up. So you have this cycle of 30 minutes nap, nap times. Um, but they can also have longer at night time. So they will start having a longer stretch of sleep, um, sort of, you know, four, five, six, some, seven hours. Um, some parents can actually get, you know, have their babies that sleep, you know, maybe 10 hours at this stage. Um, and it's all dependent on how much baby, <coughs> excuse me, how much baby feeds in the daytime. Um, it's all about body fat and the weight of your baby as well. So I tend to say if your baby's around 14, um, 13, 14 pounds, then that's when your baby is more likely to be able to sleep for a longer stretch. Um, but they'll still need um, at least one feed in the night time. Um, and then as they get older and they put more weight on, um, so usually around 15 to 16 pounds, you'll find that actually they're okay to have 12 hours without a feed. Now, a lot of babies won't, but a lot of babies still need that feed. But don't be worried and scared if your baby has starts having these 12 hour stretches of, of um, sleep at night time. Um, thank you. Um, thank you, sleep gods. Um, but what will happen is um, they will actually then have their calories in the daytime. So they will still have the same amount of calories, but they're just having more calories in the daytime rather than um, having them at night time. And they'll still come into light and deep sleeps. But what will happen is because they are um, able to settle themselves and because they don't th think that anything's going to happen, they will still keep going into deep and light sleeps like this all night. Um, and they'll still wake up, but they'll go, they'll settle themselves back off to sleep. So that's the four month sleep regression. So to help your baby with this, um, white noise becomes really, really important. So it blocks out any of the, the noise above this sound of the white noise and have it quite loud. So the idea is that it because it blocks the sounds um, when your baby does a shout out or starts grumbling, they can still hear the noise. So I'm not saying that baby's crying and we ignore it. I'm just saying they make a noise and it doesn't wake them. Or if you make a noise, it's not going to wake them. So what will happen is there'll be a consistent sound here and any sound above this consistent sound the baby won't tune into it because their brain will be listening to this continual sound. It's really, really good if you have a sibling that maybe is a bit noisy and I know you think, oh my goodness, I better go and get the baby um, or go to the sibling quickly because it's going to wake the baby up. Um, they're going to wake the baby up. It means that actually if you have this sound machine on, then it shouldn't wake the baby up because the baby will listen to this sound and not any other sounds above that. So that's really um, a good tip for that. The other thing is blackout. So you know how I said baby's got their, their vision in HD now? Having um, some blackout to really calm them down and destimulate them is going to be really, really cr crucial at this stage. So total blackout in the nursery, if they're in the nursery or in your room, if they're in your room. Um, I also think around four months old is quite a good time to maybe start having maybe one nap in the nursery just to get them used to it because you imagine that all of a sudden they're going from your room into the nursery 
and it smells differently, it sounds differently, um, and they can get quite anxious about that. So just having nap times, one nap a day in the nursery, um, it means that they get used to the sounds and the smells and they, they understand that it's time to sleep and they sleep in there. Um, so that's a really, really nice thing to do for them as well. Um, and then the other thing uh, is that they'll uh, start wanting to come out of this swaddle. So they're wanting to go into a sleeping bag. Now, my top tip for this is because, of course, there's still going to be a little bit jerky movements. They're still going to be kind of, you know, hitting themselves in the face a little bit because they're not quite used to doing that. What the best thing to do is have one arm out. OK, so um, what I tend to do is either put them in a, a sleeping bag and swaddle one arm in. Or you can get the sleeping bags that you can have one arm out and one arm zipped in. <clears throat> That's really, really good. Um, and it means that they have one arm out. <clears throat> Use the arm that you see them using the most. Or when they were inside the womb and you had the um, the scan pictures, they always tend to be a hand that kind of they prefer having next to them have that hand out first because that's their stronger hand that's the hand that they're going to be more used to um being uh in control of so have that one out that ha hand out now have that arm out in the daytime for one week okay still fully swaddle at night time and then the week two you can then get two arms out if it's going okay two arms out in the daytime and one arm out at night and then week three both arms out in the day, both arms out in night time. So having this gradual process will help your baby to go through this stage and not be anxious and stressed and everything will still be the same, okay? Because that's really important to babies. If there's a big change, it can really affect their sleep. So just having this, this little stage um, is really, really good for them. The next thing that you need to do is at any point, if your baby is getting anxious and their arms are out and um, they're getting fretful, then just put that, that arm back in and then try in another week's time because they're not quite ready. I tend to find because boys are more physical, they actually um, are in a swaddle longer because their starter reflex um, is a lot stronger. So they will tend to flail their arms a little bit more than um, little girls would. Not sure why, just happens. So that's what I've I've found Um as I've worked with little little people. Um, so have a go with that and see how that works with you. Um, the next thing, of course, um, that you start thinking about is um, obviously when your baby's six months old is putting them in a room on their own. And it's a big decision, it's a huge decision. I didn't take my, put my little girl into her own room until she was about eight months old. Um, one of the reasons, because she was born early, so she was still quite tiny. Um, two, because I was breastfeeding and it was just easier to be able to get her out of the cot. Um, but what I did find was that obviously she was starting to grow out of the next to me crib. And so that I ended up actually um, putting her in a travel cot next to me, which I found was much easier. Um, slightly smaller than obviously than your cot, easy to put up. So I just bought a proper mattress for um, the travel cot and um, it was safe as well. Um, I got one that had a bassinet. So it was again, it was kind of slightly raised. So I didn't have to kind of keep putting uh, putting her down right at the bottom. So she was still pretty much next to me on my level. So that was a godsend. I really, really used that and it was brilliant. And of course, then you've got it all the time when you go traveling um, with your little one or you're going to granny's, granny can have it at her house. So it, it just really it was brilliant. Um, and then when I did actually put her in her own room, I actually had a day bed in there um, and I slept in there um, probably for about two weeks um, every night and then kind of did every other night so that I knew that she was OK and it was you know more for me really than her. So kind of doing that little gradual process of me kind of, you know, being on my own again, because it was very strange. Um, very quiet as well, which was it was it was a very odd feeling. But um, it's when you want to do it. It's up to you when you want to do it. Um, don't get anyone to pressurise you into what you want to do. Um, you know, obviously the guidelines are six months. I understand that some parents, um, for whatever reason, have their baby in their um in the nursery um younger than that, or they go and sleep in the in the nursery at a younger age with their baby. 
um rather than being in in the other room because i know obviously you know often dads get kicked out into the into the spare room because it's a bit too noisy um and uh you know it, it just that's that's what happens so whatever works for your household and um, that's great but that that can really help um you kind of transition so having just a blow up mattress in there um can really help um when your baby's about four months old um they're going to have a nap or they're going to be tired for a nap around every 90 minutes of wait time okay so what you'll find is you will uh they'll wake up and they'll be quite busy and you'll change the nappy and give them a feed and they can have a really nice play little chat cuddles and then it, they'll start showing signs of tiredness. So signs of tiredness are rubbing their eyes, feeling on the back of their neck for the label, playing with their ears. Um, they start yawning and they also start doing something called going in the zone, which is about what I call that. So what happens is they, you'll see they'll stare into space and they're going. So that's what happens. The last thing before your baby goes to sleep is they stare into space and they, their eyes defocus and then they start closing their eyelids and their eyelids start getting heavier and heavier and that's how they go to sleep. So if you find that your baby's starting to disengage from either you or if they're on the play mat disengaging from mat and just staring into space, what they often do is they do a short, short cry. So they'll kind of go <laughs> and then carry on playing. So that's them kind of saying, actually, you know, feeling a bit tired, mummy, and I need to go to sleep. So what you'll find is if you get the that timing right um you will be getting into the nursery or into your room closing the blinds so it's nice and dark um getting them into a swaddle or a sleeping bag reading them a story because again at four months old it's really nice to read a story um before bedtime and before nap times and it starts this whole routine this whole familiar pattern that happens before they go to sleep and it makes them feel really reassured that everything's okay um, and then obviously cuddle and then into their cot um and then what can happen is um, as they get a little bit older, they can stay awake for a little bit longer, but actually not that long. So um, by the time they're five months old, they can stay awake for about uh, an hour and 45 minutes. And then by the time they're six months old, that becomes two hours. So that's two hours of wake time. And what happens also is what you don't realise is you have about a 15 minute window of opportunity. So this is when your baby says, I'm tired and I need to go to sleep to 15 minutes later when they're saying, I'm really tired. I'm now overtired and I can't go to sleep on my own because I don't know what to do. And, I, and babies, are, it's quite funny, babies often panic. It's almost like they want to go to sleep and they don't know how to and then they get all anxious and then they start crying. And then that's when you start having to really help them to get off to sleep. So you start having to rock them feeding them to sleep um sometimes you abandon the nap altogether and you think well, okay well I'm just going to put her or him in the car seat I'm going to drive around or I'm going to put them in the pram and go for a walk now if you're getting really anxious then do that that's absolutely fine um having a pram blackout to put over the pram is really really a good thing to do because again you're still having that nice nap time it also means when you come back you can still have the, that over the baby and it means that babies will sleep longer for that time. And also, obviously, it stops the insects coming in and also, obviously, the sunlight. So having a pram blackout like the snoo shade is really important to keep your baby's sleep routine going so they're not overtired. Um, again, if you start getting anxious and you start thinking, oh, gosh, I'm dreading this nap, just try as much as possible to just have one nap in the in the cot in the daytime. Um, just so it means that the baby is getting used to going to sleep in their cot because what happens is of course if you start um, just having naps out and about in the day or in the car seat or on you or in the pram then that's what they start thinking happens and so actually what happens is at night time you know things aren't moving they're not being cuddled next to you that's when the, the issues can start because then they don't want to go to sleep which is understandable because they think they go to sleep either on you or in the car seat or in the pram so what you need to teach them is the cot or the crib is the loveliest place to be just like when we get to a certain time at night time you just think i just want to go to bed and you get into the bed and it's all snuggly and you cuddle up with your quilt and it's so lovely that's what we want for our babies we want our babies to get into their crib or their cot and snuggle up 
and have a really, really lovely sleep and think, oh, this is a really lovely, safe, secure place, my happy place. That's what we want to happen when we get babies to sleep in their cot or their cribs. So, of course, the next big thing is coming out from a crib into a proper cot bed or a cot. So that's another big transition that they're going to have between this four and six month phase because they're getting too big for the, the uh, Moses basket or the crib next to you. Um, so there's lots of things on the market, obviously, and um, it's up to you whether you want a cot or a cot bed, depending obviously on the size of the nursery. Um, what I do tend to find is that most parents, when they have a cot, they then sometimes think, oh, I wish I'd have got a cot bed because, of course, baby gets bigger. And often children will stay in their cot, um, into their cot bed until they're around two and a half. So actually, if you look at the cot now, the crib, you know, the cot now, and you think, oh my goodness, that's, that's plenty big enough. Actually, when you put a two and a half year old in, it's not going to be big enough. That's why a lot of people go for the cot bed. So that's the bigger one. Also, you've got the added bonus of it turns into a toddler bed. So you don't have to then buy a toddler bed as well. So, um... A, a cot bed is is a, a really good idea and of course your baby looks quite tiny in there um but uh they will get used to that as long as um what i tend to do is if i'm moving um things from uh the crib um into a cot bed i use the same sheet or i have a sheet that i put down that that i then use on the cot so it still smells of them it's still that familiar smell so it's not all new and then you can transfer that and it's still the same smell the other thing that I do is um, from around four months old, your baby, when I said, you can remember I said that your baby will starting to learn that their hands belong to them. They'll start grabbing things. And what will happen is if their arms are out, they start grabbing. So they start grabbing you as you're trying to put them into the into the crib or the cot. They start grabbing the um, sides of the cot, um, the material. And, and it's they're just trying to grab hold of something because of course you imagine they've been in the swaddle and they're all nice and this cozy and then all of a sudden they're starting to grab they've got this new thing that they can do and they want to do and they've got nothing to grab onto this is when i introduce most people introduce a comforter now later on a comforter is great but most comforters are actually made out of the synthetic material which is not great obviously to be in a cot with your baby so what i always do is i have a muzzy square just a small muzzy square and I knot it in the middle so it doesn't not going anywhere it's not going to wrap around the neck it's not going to get them stuck or anything and the, then they can hold on to it they're going to hold on to each end the knot in the middle is actually quite good for teething because what you'll find is they'll put it and they'll start chewing on it um and it's because it's light and it's breathable you're not going to have that worry that something's going to happen to them okay if you ever obviously see it going in front of their mouth obviously move it away what you tend to find is um, because it is so breathable, it, you know, it's, it's not going to mask their face, but actually obviously move it away. If you're worried about it, don't use one. Um, but what I do tend to find is it's really good to hold on to. If your baby has a dummy, you can knock the dummies onto it. And so you have this dummy. So your baby can then start learning that they can put the dummy into their mouth themselves because that doesn't really happen until around 10 months um, trying to find a dummy. So if you decide your baby wants a dummy or you can't get rid of the dummy, it's also really good to get rid of the dummy because you can give the comforter instead of the dummy and they will start holding on to the comforter and having it on um, sucking onto it instead of sucking on the dummy. The other thing you can do, which is a really nice thing, is having it tucked down your top. So having it tucked down your top so it smells of you, you can put it down your partner's top so it smells of daddy um, or mummy and it means that it smells of home. And it's a comfort for them. So if they're going to grannies or if they're going to nursery, um, it means that they have that still got that comfort for them. So I'm hoping as much as possible that this has helped you to start understanding about how babies sleep. And if you get that right opportunity to get your baby to sleep, then what will happen is you will get a baby that sleeps really well and um, you can then sleep really well because I think obviously you know sleep deprivation is torture I totally understand that so hopefully those things have helped you now please stay safe please look after yourselves have a look um if you're looking for a cot obviously um start looking because you know there's there's lots of things online pure flow do a fantastic uh breathable mattress so have a look at that 
Um, and also they do sleeping bags and loads of other things as well. I never knew how many products they have, but they do have a lot of products. So have a look on that. Um, I'm really enjoying helping you through Pure Flow, who are the sleep experts. And uh, we're going to be doing some more Q&As. Uh, and I'm going to do the next stage of um, your baby's development as well. So if your baby's coming up to the development or you're in it now, um, then that's going to really help you. And um, please share because, of course, you know, you need to let your friends and family know that you're getting some help and support. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Helping and supporting people at the moment. Um, if you want some help, my website is joetantum.com. Um, and yeah, here to help Q&As and you take care and stay safe. Thank you.